I call Fletcher Tabuto. Uh, thank you, sir. I'd just like to take the opportunity to reply to some of the speakers uh, previous, uh, because it's quite frustrating to hear the uh, Minister for Economic Development talk about how uh, the sell-off of New Zealand assets and land is coined as an investment. So it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And then it was frustrating, to be completely honest, to see the Minister in charge and then the Chairman of the Finance and Expenditure Committee stand up and simply go through the motions. But as it was noted before, this is a bill that is simply going through the motions and it does not achieve any of the stated objectives that the National Party have actually mangled to turn it into something non-offensive, but it doesn't even achieve uh, what it set out to do in terms of identifying where is the problem. What can we do to help real New Zealanders cope with this almost maniacal rise in property prices in the Auckland housing market. The Minister spoke about the short time frame uh, that uh, he had and the government had to get this through, but it just highlights an ongoing dilemma that New Zealanders are facing every single day, more and more often, in terms of the select committee process there seems to be no time for consultation. There seems to be no time to listen to real New Zealanders. And as it turns out, there was no time for the Minister's own department, there was no time for the Minister's own department to do a detailed analysis of the cost benefit and what would be the pros and cons of this legislation because it has been so rushed. The IRD said it themselves. <coughs> Excuse me. There are. There was a conversation from the minister, a statement from the minister, that the intent is to capture those who are evading their obligations to pay tax. But what we're not being told about is the unrealistic um, demand side pressures that we're seeing from overseas investors coming on to this country and artificially inflating the uh, prices of the property market. It's a waste of time tax anyway. It's going to be the dim line test which will achieve absolutely nothing. The experts in the tax in New Zealand have said it will achieve nothing. New Zealand First says it will achieve absolutely nothing. This bill does not help us to understand New Zealand's residential property market and where the pressures are. The Minister himself um, said that the Inland Revenue Department um, was ignored in terms of their advice given. IRD said there was no reason to accept, exempt main homeowners from the requirements. There are too many loopholes already and, and so to exempt main home owned buyers, it's been raised so many times on this side of the house, just pointing out the reality of the situation. The information's already there. It's not an extra collection of anything. It is simply a con consolidation of that data so that we understand the property market. It would not increase compliance costs. Um, the definition, place of residence which they feel the greatest connection. Sir, where on earth does that come from? There is no precedent in any legislation for that terminology, for that definition. And this government talks about reducing compliance costs and not wanting to confuse people. Goodness sake, this new definition that comes out of nowhere will do that very thing, sir. It will confuse everyone and it will, in fact, confuse pieces of legislation that are uh, trying to achieve uh, some objective which New Zealand First suggests will not be achieved at all. Um, he spoke about money launderers. This bill will not help the IRD to um, identify or do anything with uh, the money laundering issue uh, that New Zealand has. Um, funding the police properly might be a good start to that, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. And, but unfortunately, I have to uh, disagree completely with the, my lab, Labour and Green colleagues. This bill does not start us down the track, sir. 
This bill starts us down a pathway that isn't so much filled with potholes and crevices. This bill starts us down a pathway that goes all of two feet and ends in completely empty air. Mr Bishop spoke about being well-intentioned and well-meaning. Perhaps he didn't actually read the bill. This bill dodges the whole point of the legislation around trying to identify what the problem is and how do we address it. Because we know foreign investors, not new New Zealanders, but foreign investors are creating a real problem in terms of young Kiwi couples, for example, wanting to buy their first home in Auckland. All New Zealand First wanted was a comprehensive register so that we could have a meaningful debate and discussion on that problem. We know it's a problem. Mainstream New Zealand economists know it's a problem, but this government refuses to allow for a meaningful compilation of data so that we can have a meaningful debate about it. It does not even actually achieve what the National Party's mangled um, attempt at the definition or objective in terms of uh, identifying who uh, these investors are. Because there are so many loopholes, which I'll get onto in a moment, that anyone can drive through them, sir. And then even if it did what it said it was going to do, we come to the bright line test, which is better termed the dim line test, which will achieve nothing in terms of collecting a tax or, or dampening down the Auckland property market. He speaks of people worrying and misinterpreting the legislation around them being taxed for their personal homes, and yet National refused to give New Zealanders a good and meaningful consultation uh, period in the select committee process. It's just an overall farce. So this government continues to deny the demand side of the equation. They keep talking about uh, lack of supply, but we know that demand for Auckland property is huge, and it's not just Kiwis playing in that market. We have 60 to 70,000 new immigrants coming into New Zealand, but apparently only 10 to 12 of them are actually skilled labourers. Those Kiwis, new Kiwis, that we actually need to help grow this economy. The, this government is deliberately missing the point. This is a national government that is led by a global trader. It is adamant and it insists on allowing the rest of the world to buy up our productive land, our assets and our homes. We know why everyone around the world wants to buy our land, but what is this government, why is this government so insisting, insistent on selling it off and allowing it to be sold off to foreign investors? They talk about investment, sir, but it's not an investment in New Zealand. And I just wanted to point out to the Prime Minister that they don't let this happen in Hawaii. <laughs> to buy land, to buy a residential property in Hawaii, Mr Speaker, you have to not only be an American citizen, but prove your heritage to the Hawaiian um, whakapapa, your background there, to, in order to buy land there. So it just doesn't make any sense, sir. New Zealand First wants a full and comprehensive register so New Zealanders can know the truth about this situation. This bill lacks substance. It is full of so many loopholes that New Zealand First, although we supported it through the first reading to select committee so we could have a robust debate and flesh out the issues, sir, none of those were addressed. In fact, it's become even more vacuous and so New Zealand First cannot support this bill. Thank you, Mr Speaker.